Um, my name is Richard Crowther, and I am the GIS analyst with Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments, NVCOG for short. Um, we are hosting a composter and rain barrel sale um, where you can buy discounted uh, composting uh, accessories and a rain barrel. Uh, it's on uh, our website to purchase, and there is a pick one pickup date, which is July 19th. July, June 19th. And in accord with that, we are hosting this um, composting workshop and we're kind enough to get Susan DeVito, uh, who is a uh, master composter and she'll explain more about what that is and who she is. Hi everyone, can you see me? and hear me? Yep. Okay, so my name is Susan DeVito and I have always loved gardening, but it is really a trial and error thing and you need some time for it. Uh, so I've always thought about composting as well and did take the master composting class through the Yukon Extension back in November of 2019 and was set to do my volunteer hours in 2020. And need I say any more, that was put on hold. So um, I thank you everyone for coming out for this presentation and for uh, NVCOG help allowing me to provide this presentation on composting. So it's going to be more of an overview than an in-depth instructional presentation. I believe that the PowerPoint that I will be presenting will be available to anyone as well. Correct, Rich? And um, yes. there's about 23 slides, but there is a plethora of information on the internet. So I'll provide some useful books for references that I highly suggest um, you go out and get. Um, and I'll also provide some useful resource of online um, useful composting um, information. <laughs> All right, so um, in an article in the Hartford Current, March 28th of 2019, Connecticut throws away 520,000 tons of food every year. Uh, food is the that takes up the most of our landfills, plastics are second. And food scraps are not waste and are not meant to be incinerated. So hopefully everyone who is joining this presentation is gonna start and do their part for sustainability. Um, and we're gonna hold all the questions till the end for some Q&A, okay? All right, let me share my slides. Can everybody see that? Oh, yes. thank you. Yes. Thank you for the nod. <laughs> All right, so before we go into the how of composting, I'll cover the why. Why compost? It adds organic nutrients to the soil, which become available to the plants over time. It's an excellent soil amendment to improve the soil structure, aeration, and drainage. It makes plants more able to resist disease and decreases garden and kitchen waste going to the landfill or the waste stream. Soil properly amended with compost has enough macro and trace nutrients so that little fertilizer is required for proper plant growth. It sometimes may need a little addition of potassium, but you could also do that with natural products, waste products. And the compost will not leach into the groundwater or your well water. Raking and bagging leaves and grass clippings remove organic material and interrupts the natural nutrient site. 
The goal is to recycle on-site resources with minimal outside inputs. Compost improves the soil structure, structure by increasing the water and nutrient holding capacity of the soil and improving pore structure, including rice, recycling paper, plastic, metals, and glass. Composting is the most important thing a homeowner can do to sustain the environment. Okay. What is composting? It's the controlled microbial decomposition of organic matter such as food and yard waste by bacteria and other microorganisms in the presence of oxygen and water. It's the acceleration of the natural decay process and the result of such managed decomposition is compost that can be used to add nutrients to and improve the stu structure of soil naturally. Decay takes place naturally over time, but composting speeds up the process. Types of composting are aerobic, which needs oxygen, and anaerobic, which needs little or no oxygen. Both bacteria break down organic matter. There's vermicomposting with worms and okashi, like pickling. Um, compost is rich in nutrients and is excellent in of course, improving the quality of soil texture. With aerobic, with the oxygen, which is what whoever ordered the earth machine you'll be using, it um, is a higher turnover rate, pun intended, ability to kill harmful pathogens, and it has minimal environmental impact. Small amount of carbon dioxide is emitted, where with anaerobic, it takes longer, produces little heat, thus resulting in the survival of many pathogens, weeds, and seeds, and causes a significant amount of methane. And this is what commonly takes place in nature, like in bogs and streams. All right. <clears throat> so again, all composes with time. There is benign neglect versus controlled composting. Um, there, there's no real wrong way to compost. There is a science to it, but I wouldn't say it's an absolute exact science, and that's good. There's a cold pile versus a hot pile, and a hot pile would have an internal temperature of 130 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. How you compost and what you get At the end result will depend on your reasons for composting and the time and effort available. Simply allowing the, com the organic materials to decompose in place is called passive composting. This can take eight to 12 months. Weeds and diseased plants should not be included. The conditions necessary to create the ideal compost pile that will decompose quickly is the hot pile with internal temperatures, again, ranging from 130 to 150 degrees. However, everything organic will decompose eventually. The main requirements for good composting, carbon containing material, nitrogen containing material, those microorganisms, microorganisms to break down the carbon and nitrogen, oxygen, moisture, and warm temperatures. So the six requirements for proper composting, it's the basic recipe. How you play with this basic recipe depends on your resources, ingredients, time, space, and money. Outdoor temperatures need to be above 50 degrees for major microbial activity. You can continue placing kitchen scraps in the pile over the winter since minor decomposition starts at 28 degrees. Carbon nitrogen ratio. Decomposers need carbon for energy and nitrogen for growth. All organic matter has a C and N 
in differing percentages, referred to as the CN ratio. For a perfect compost pile, you have to have a proper blended initial ratio between 25 to one to 30 to one. Commercial operations have detailed algorithms and it's very complicated. So I suggest a common sense approach. There's a calculator from Washington State that I will include when I give Rich um, some of the other useful resources. It's a click of the cat county Washington composting calculator where you can put in um, your materials and it'll spit out a ratio. Common sense approach to the brown green ratio. Brown is for the carbon. I like to think of um, carbo, uh, oh my, cardboard. <laughs> I was gonna say carbohydrate. I like to think of cardboard for carbon, anything brown, brown leaves. And green is the nitrogen. So dry brown matter is normally high in carbon. Dried leaves, straw, wood chips, fresh and green matter is normally high in nitrogen, such as grass clippings, vegetative kitchen waste, hedge trimmings, manure, coffee grounds, meals, um, melargonite also have nitrogen. A final blend of two thirds brown matter and one third green matter based on dry weight, not volume. Layer the pile with three to five of brown alternating with one to two inches of green. Add activators, if you want, um, such as worms, with a shovel full of soil or compost that's already made, which you can purchase. Every few layers, add some twigs to help aerate so that there's little pockets of air inside your pile. Water each layer. It should feel like a wrung out sponge. After two weeks, the pile should be reduced roughly by half, turn and build back up alternating old matter with new. Microorganisms to break down the carbon and nitrogen. An initial CN ratio of 25 to 30 to one is ideal for microbial decomposition, bacteria and other microorganisms naturally appearing in organic matter break down the carbon and nitrogen particles into inorganic forms. To ensure you, that you have microorganisms in your pile, add a shovel full of soil or finished compost. Normally you don't need activators and know that too much carbon and microbes will take nitrogen from the soil depriving nearby plants and too much nitrogen and the nitrogen will change into ammonia released into the air. Oxygen and water. Decomposing microorganisms require oxygen and water for survival. Optimally, a pile should be aerated twice a month to provide sufficient oxygen to the center of the pile. Piles should be damp, not wet, like a wrung out sponge, and should be constructed on well draining soil. Add water to each layer. There are many ways to aerate a spade or a spading fork. It, some people opt for a tumbler. Commercial aerators available through gardening supply catalogs have large screw and winged aerators. Locate pile on a flat surface to avoid excess leaching out of nutrients. Make a depression in top to collect water. During prolonged dry spells, cover pile with plastic to retard evaporation. Interior pile temperature. Microbial decomposition releases heat. Internal pile temperature for ideal decomposition is between 90 to 125 degrees. Below 90 and the decomposition is taking place at reduced rates. Decomposition still takes place in a cold pile, but it takes much longer. Nurseries and garden catalogs carry compost thermometers and aerators. Microbial decomposition releases the heat over 160 degrees and the pile is too hot 
for bacteria to survive. Aerate the pile to cool off. Most pathogens die at a temperature of 130 degrees, while seeds are destroyed at temperatures in excess of 140 degrees. Um, if a gardener is maintaining a cold pile, care should be taken not to add diseased plants or seeds. The decomposition depends on, again, the proper CN ratio, the presence of microorganisms, the dampness of the pile, outdoor and inter interior pile temperatures, the amount of oxygen, you want that aerobic decomposition, and the frequency of aeration. In the summer months, you may need to water thoroughly two times per month. If outdoor temps are above 50 degrees, um, that's ideal. Interior temps between 90 and 125 do not allow the pile to heat over 150. Frequency of the aeration affects time to finish product. Decomposition depends on location. The critical mass of the pile, it should be a cube, roughly a minimum of three feet square and a maximum of five. The ideal is four by four by four. The coarseness of the ingredients. Sunlight will speed the decomposition process, but you'll need to water it more. The volume of the pile should be three to five cubic feet, too small, and there won't be the mass necessary to get that internal heat up to 150 degrees because the heat will escape through the edges of the pile that are too close to the center. Too large and insufficient oxygen will get to the microorganisms at the center of the pile. The surface area of material added to the pile is important. The bigger the individual bits, the longer it takes to decompose. If you add leaves or newspaper, it's better to shred these. Chop vegetative kitchen scraps into small pieces and eggshells should also be crushed. I'm not gonna go over too many of um, the different types of structures. There's people can just have a, an area in their yard that's just um, allocated for the compost without any surrounding um, edges, but that's prone to rodents and bears <laughs> and other animals. Um, you just have to find what works for you. So you can build a simple wire cage and using chicken wire. Uh, a wooden bin. Some people have gotten the cement blocks and made like a little area um, that they keep open. You, some people have even bought like the big Rubbermaid garbage like um, barrels. And then there are the tumbler bins as well. Some of them are simple and inexpensive to very complex and expensive. You can use a simple cold pile for weeds, pull the weeds before they flower and cut off the roots because they don't decompose well. Alternate with last year's leaves. This takes two years and needs screening. Do not use invasive weeds like garlic mustard. The one on the left is similar to what the earth machine looks like. And they have lids that they lock. And I don't know if um, some people opted for the rodent screen protector. I think you can just also get some chicken wire and staple it onto the bottom of it as well, but definitely should have something to protect from uh, vermin. All right, so there are some standard rules for the do's and don'ts, but there is some controversy as well. And many gardeners will, will swear by the tried and true practices regardless. Each ingredient has a different nutrient content. 
Having a wide range of ingredients makes for a more nutrient-rich compost. Art versus science of the formulas. Sometimes all you have are dried leaves and grass clippings. Final fertilizer ratio of end product normally is one to one to one. Great compost matter. Carbon sources are fallen leaves, preferably shredded, mulch, dryer lint, but of course not too much. And I wouldn't use dryer lint if you use dryer sheets. Soil and eggshells are CN neutral. neutral. And the nitrogen sources, untreated grass clippings, raw vegetative kitchen waste, blood and bone meals, plant trimmings cut up. Do not use plants such as live oak, black walnut, garlic mustard, and sunflower. Do not use poisonous plant leaves such as oleander, hemlock, and yew. Rinse your eggshells and crumble or whirl in a blender. Limit eggshells to every once in a while since alkaline materials lead to the loss of nitrogen. Add calcium carbonate at the end. Raw vegetative scraps, lettuce leaves, carrot and potato peels, tomato pith without seeds. Finely chopped thick leafy material like leeks and artichoke. Keep strong oated materials, onions out if animals are a problem. It may be wise not to compost broth, um, I think it's broccoli type plants because of club root. Good compost matter, straw, shredded newspaper, shredded wood or bark, pine needles, sawdust, nitrogen sauces, deadheaded flowers and non-invasive weeds, coffee grounds and tea leaves, rotted farm stock manure, cow horse and poultry, and malorganite. You should limit quantities of these, especially those low in nutrients. Use vegetarian manures only. There is concern about residual worming compound in horses, carpus sulfate in the cows, and pathogenic bacteria and antibiotic residues in manure. So. I would probably not use those. USDA research has indicated that the degradation of teramycin is hastened by oxygen, appropriate moisture levels, and elevated temperatures. I still wouldn't take the chance. Bad compost matter. In other words, never use dairy products, including milk, cheese, butter, or yogurt, meat and fish scraps, uh, grease, bones, fats, oil, salad dressings, no cooked foods, pet feces, non-carnivores, okay, diseased plant material, coal, wood, or charcoal ashes, glossy or color magazines and newspapers, even though they say some of them are made with like um, a vegetable oil, gloss, um, pesticide treated plant material, herbicide treated grass clippings and invasive weeds. Single application of pesticide can kill two thirds of earthworms in direct contact with affected soil. So we don't wanna kill the earthworms. And that completes the presentation. There's a fantastic book, it's considered the Bible and it's the Rodell book of composting and the other one is the Complete Compost Gardening Guide. And I will, again, um, email Rich a Word document with a lot of other great useful online resources. So if you wanna open it up, Rich, to some questions and answers, I'm ready to go. Uh, certainly. Um, we're kind of a small group today, so if you just wanted to unmute yourself and ask Susan any questions, feel free. So I have a question, and I've been reading a little bit about composting and that um, uh, meats are not bad. I, I thought that they were bad just more for attracting animals. Is, is there meats? more to it? Yeah. 
yes and i were in i would i would not do meats it also will attract animals and make the pile rot quicker if you're not doing the correct balance and everything in moderation quite honestly yeah. it really is a trial and error so i would probably start small and nothing that was cooked in any type of like greasy fashion because not only that it's going to affect any microbes that are in the pile as well because like i don't the believe water. they digest that gotcha okay no that's helpful thank you yeah you're welcome these are the books can you see also these are the two books that um, we highly recommend. So again, I'll include that in the references. Any other? Yeah, um, I have actually a few questions. Um, so my first question is, uh, is there a way to measure the carbon to nitrogen ratio of your output to see if you're doing it right? Or is there not really any way to test that? It's, there might be, but that would get very, very complicated and expensive. But I will include that calculator so that you get um, a broad idea of, of what you're doing. And then the true test is going to be if you're going to get the finished product, which is that eventually black gold, they call it. And it's just a very nice, fine, uh, dark, rich colored soil that is very um, kind of loamy, you know, can run through. Oh, so fingers. sort of the consistency and the texture of the soil is a good way to tell if you Correct. have a good, okay. That's right. And the same thing with whether it needs water, does it need more? If you get a really, really, it shouldn't smell like it's rotting. And if you do, then you may need to add more carbon. Um, so it's, it's just really a balance and finding the right balance. And because there's so many different ways to compost, you can be aggressive, you can be passive. Um, there's really no wrong way to do it. It's just, you're gonna find what works for you with time and money. Okay, um, another question I had was, um, you had mentioned, right, if, if you choose to maintain a hot pile and um, you, you, know, you could check the temperature to make sure it's in that range. So what happens if you check the temperature and it's too cold? How do you get the temperature up? Um, you'll have to aerate it and then kind of make it more um, compact and, and just keep adding that layer of carbon to nitrogen so that the microbes, it's because of them, that's what creates the heat. If they have enough of a balance to break down, that's gonna create the heat. Okay. And Great. then again, if you need to cover it, if you have it in a shady spot, you may want to, some people put like a black garbage bag over it to- Oh, to attract some trap heat. in the heat. And, sure. Okay, and then um, one last question. So I was kind of envisioning composting as, um, you know, you cook a meal, you have some stuff left over, as long as it's on the, the do list, you could go over and, and dump it in. But in terms of maintaining a ratio, it almost sounds like maybe you should put aside some waste because it's gonna mess up the ratio. That's so exactly you, it, yeah. Yeah, so, so does that mean you should have some extra storage? There's a whole plethora of composting pails you can, make them yourself. Um, they sell actual composting little bins like that fit underneath the kitchen cabinet or on top of your uh, kitchen counter. They have some that have decomposing bags inside of them so you can toss the whole thing into. It's kind of like a way station until you could either get out to your compost. Maybe it's winter time, you can't get mm -hmm. to it. Or yeah, you're letting that one cook and you're just gathering your stuff, you know, when okay. it's time to put it in. So I highly recommend that. I have okay. two of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much. It's very, oh, you're very welcome. useful. Good luck. You'll Thank do you. fine. I can tell. <laughs> Thanks. And we do have one of the kitchen pails available on the website for sale. So Rich, as a newbie, I bought that whole kit from your site. And I, like I said, I know nothing. So can you just talk a little bit about how what Susan said 
parlays into this thing that I'm going to pick up on the 17th or whenever. 19th. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get these slides as well. And I would probably invest in a, in a book, but honestly, all you have to do is just go on Google and just put in composting and from other, you know, places, other states, Vermont has a great site, Washington state has a great um, resource. So no, I, I understand, no, I, I definitely have been doing reading, but I guess my question is, so I bought this bin, right? So I don't need to build a box because I have a bin, mm -hmm. right? So and add, where do you start? There's a way to add water in it. I, I don't even know what I got, I guess is what I'm saying. So, so, so how does that play in? Yeah. I don't know, Aaron, I don't know if you want it since you actually have one and use it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you're gonna get a bin and, and there are several different, um, I don't know what um, kit you got, but all of them come with sort of a beginner guide that, you know, it's basically the do's and don'ts, um, how to get started. Um, it's short, but I think it contains a lot of the, the information you'll need to really get started. Um, and, you know, I think from, I, I've been through a few of these um, workshops, and I've talked to a lot of people that are that are into composting, you know, it's really, you know, I mean, the, the big benefit, you know, in, in my eyes is the fact that you're not throwing away all of that stuff that probably shouldn't be ending up in your garbage, you know, it shouldn't be going to an incinerator. Um, you know, it's basically half of half of almost half of our garbage by weight that we throw out in, in Connecticut is organic material. So the fact that you're getting it out of the waste stream is already a win. And I think, you know, you can be as, as lax about it or as, you know, involved in your composting as, as you really want to be or can be. You know, I've, I've had a pile for years now that we basically just throw it in a pile. And once in a while, if I feel like it, I'll turn it over. And, you know, um, you know, that that it does work. You know, we do we do end up with compost. It probably takes longer than if we really tended to it more more uh attentively but um you know I don't, I don't think there's a wrong way to do it really unless unless maybe there is a wrong way you know? i and guess I'll, never touching I'll, it at all but even then it. it would still break down yeah yeah, but yeah so i wonder if there's a the a, you know just to kind of um maybe help elucidate i think what tracy might be trying to say is perhaps there's a video on the website of the actual physical machine because i think what what if, if i'm understanding correctly what you're asking is how do you turn that machine? How do you add water? Yeah. How does it, how does the physical machine work? Well, I right. guess is that the question. Yeah, because like, so what I'm saying, so, so it does have a thing, a crank. I know I sound so. No, it doesn't have it. The earth machine does not have a crank. No, okay. No crank. So there's, there's it a has a, a, like a fork. An okay. Either. And, um, it's, and then you can you add water into, you open it up and add water into it with the hose. Right, but it. you want to add water almost like in a spray fashion. Okay, gotcha. Maybe Not get like a spray so. bottle. Okay. Right. It, okay. It's just, right. um, and you don't have to purchase the, the aerator from the earth machine. I think you can get something in a um, department, you know, in a ACE department or Home Depot. That I think is, I have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, t the top of it is, you know, it's it's pretty big. You can get a, a pitchfork in there or a shovel if you needed to turn it over. Um, and then there's also a little, um, a door on the bottom that, you know, I think it's intended to, you know, take out the finished compost from the bottom. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay, awesome. yeah. so, I know and, I know, learned, I'm just being. That's okay. I want you to definitely keep us posted. No pressure. No pressure at all. So I will answer the question on how you could screw it up. I will do that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> this is actually a nice product. The earth machine is is pretty good. So uh, you're happy with it, Aaron, aren't you? I mean, it's yeah, it was, it was really no impressive. maintenance to it. Yep. And it's it looks it looks pretty nice too in the backyard. So that's it's better nice. than a pile. That's Ever since I ordered it, every time I'm throwing banana peels away in eggshells, I'm like, mm, I want to, you know, because I get it. It's weighing down my garbage. Like I'm excited for this. So the only cool. the only thing that I envision right now when you're first starting is that you're going to have way too much food waste than you're going to need in that pile. And that's OK. 
but I wouldn't definitely throw all that in. So you're going to invent, you're going to, or at least just toss it somewhere else, but get like a kitchen pail to start that. And then um, as the pile gets bigger, then you can definitely add more of that kitchen waste. It, it's just, it's not for the inpatient, that's for sure. Um, wow. <laughs> so, um, but have fun with it. Have fun with the trial and error and know that you're doing a great thing. If all of us do this little bit, it makes a big difference. It really does. And not only that, for the plant. So um, it's so much better than adding chemical fertilizer. Um, and, and the finished product is beautiful and doesn't even have a smell. It's just amazing that we can do this. Um, so yeah, but I definitely want to see how you come along in a few months. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else, any questions? If not, I guess we could thank Susan for her presentation and look for, I will follow up with everybody who registered and send out the list of books and online resources that she'll forward to me. I'll send that along. And anyone and, feel free to contact me if any other questions arise by all means. And if I don't have the answer, I'll find it and get back to you. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for attending. Thank you.